Welcome. So, you know, the Word of God is like a deep, bottomless iceberg or huge, huge mountain that goes on and on. Mountains, you know, so much. So I try to draw this little picture, if you can see this guy, uh, this little uh, little lad, this little boy or girl, whatever. Um, I guess he's a boy. And he's uh, in a boat here, and he's in this big ocean. He comes to this point here. He sees this, like, he doesn't want to run into it. He, he goes, what? It's in my way or something. He, he finds this thing. But if he were to really look underneath the water, he would see this, <laughs> like the... The big thing underneath the water is a big mountain in the water. You know, it's an iceberg. So this is like the tip of the iceberg. And uh, what I'm going to do is do a little bit on this next section in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus is preaching on. And we're going to only do the tip of the iceberg. This particular thing that Jesus talks about and introduces um, is loaded <laughs> so much. Ah. So I want to try and keep this short and, uh, and try and get this. But uh, Jesus said in this next passage, um, and this is after he talked about us being light and salt, his disciples. He's talking to this Jewish group of followers now. They're all Jews at this point. Later Gentiles come in, you know, in the New Testament and in and, 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 and life, in the world, in history. And so he's talking to them, and then he wants to make it perfectly clear right up front I mean, this is one of the reasons why he starts talking about this. He says, I haven't come to destroy the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets, what's he saying here? Um, like, why is he even talking about that? Well, the law and the prophets, you guys, is the Bible. See, um, if I were to take the Bible, and I don't know if you know this, most of you might know it, some of you might not. If I were to draw a Bible here, and this is what we're talking about, like, where's that Bible? I'll get one real quick. Like, here's the Bible right here, see? Okay. Um, if I were to uh, actually draw that, and then it, it's really divided into two big sections. You know what they are? Um, maybe the younger ones might not, so I'll go ahead and do it real quick. We have what's called the OT, the Old Testament here. And then if we have an old, what do you think the next one is? It's the... New Testament. And that's what we're studying right now, the first book of the New Testament, Matthew. And so um, we have the New Testament and Old Testament. And in the times of Jesus, when he was speaking this and, and when they were all uh, speaking this stuff, like, you know, and writing uh, the Bible down, you know, it became the New Testament later. They only had the Old Testament. So when Jesus said, I have not come to destroy the law and the prophets, he's really saying, I haven't come to destroy the Old Testament. See, the Bible and the Old Testament, okay, the Hebrew scriptures, were divided up into what's called law, okay, the law, which is like the first five books of the Bible. Of course, there's commandments throughout after that, but that's a concentrated section. Of course, there's a lot of awesome stories in that too, but especially Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers have some, Deuteronomy, Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy especially. Um, really talks about the rules of God, the commandments of God, um, what he wants uh, to tell us on how to live. Okay, and then we have uh, Jesus mentioned the prophets. So I hope you can see this here, the prophets, which are, oh, a lot of them. Um, you know, uh, there's Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, um, Habakkuk, no, no Nahum, um, Jonah, Nahum, Habakkuk, I kind of messed it up there. Anyway, and then Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, you know, there's a bunch of prophets. Um, and then there's also, uh, which is mentioned sometimes uh, in other places, is called the Writings, which are 11 books, which includes Job and, oh, there's a lot of them, um, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, you know, Lamentations, etc. Anyway, so you have all these books. Um, and, and, and so, by the way, in one place, Jesus literally did say, out of the nine times it's mentioned, the law and the prophets, the law and the prophets in the, in the New Testament has mentioned that, uh, he actually said the Psalms, which are one of the writings one time in Luke 24. But anyway, so we have law and prophets. Um, and then Jesus said, I've, I've not come to destroy it. Like if I were to take a sheet of paper real quick here, I'll try and get a sheet of paper. And if I write on it real quick, I'm going to write law and prophets. Okay, uh, law, whoops, here we go, law, and then prophets, which is the Old Testament, 
again, I want to make sure you see this. Jesus said, I have not come to destroy it. Like, I haven't come to abolish it, destroy it. Jesus Christ did not come to destroy the Old Testament. And he's making them perfectly clear on that. It's making it very clear. Now, if I took this hammer right here and I started taking my room in here and all my books and everything just started hammering away, you know, break my shelves and everything, this room would be demolished. It would be horrible, um, me doing that. Jesus said, no, 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 no. This is God's word. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself literally, you know, before he came down and became human, he was the one that gave the law and the prophets and all. But he's making it clear that I have not come to abolish it. Because the first followers were saying, were probably thinking, who is this guy? He's doing all these teachings. He's starting to teach. He's healing. What does he think about God's word? Is, who is he? Is he really from God? He said, yeah, I am. And as a matter of fact, he goes on to say, uh, and I'll read it to you real quick, um, that uh, if it says, um, I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, heaven and earth, and it hasn't disappeared yet, he, you know, the earth is still here in heaven. He says, um, <clears throat> not the smallest little letter, like it's called a jot, okay? The smallest letter in the um, Hebrew alphabet, which is like an I, um, he said, and not the least stroke of a pen or the like the smallest little mark, a hook or something. Uh, it's just real tiny little thing there. A little horn is what it actually literally means. Anyway, not none of that is, uh, he says, um, they will not disappear from the law until everything is fulfilled. Now, here's what he said. Do not think that I, he's making sure it's clear to everybody's mind, have come to destroy the law and the prophets. So the Old Testament is still good. It's good today because heaven and earth haven't, hasn't disappeared. But then he says, I have come to fulfill it. Whew. Now that's the part like when it's like you start going in the deeper part of the iceberg that I'm not going to discuss at this point. As we go through our studies of the Bible, I mean the New Testament, and we get to the, the letters of, of Ephesians and Galatians and Colossians and all that, I'm going to try and unpack it, you know, get it more and more so you understand what he's saying. But I just want to make sure you get this, at least the brief outline, the tip of the iceberg of this. If this is Jesus, okay, if this is him, the figure of Jesus here, um, he said, I've came to fulfill, to complete this, the law, the writings, and the prophets. I think there's a lot we could say here, but just briefly, skimming across the surface, he's saying, I am what that book is about, ultimately. Everything points to me. Just like, do you see my shadow right here? See my shadow, like in the in the board here? And that light a lot of times over there kind of shines on this. I hope you can see this without the light hiding it. Um, but see my shadow of my head right here and see my shadow of my hand right here? Um, that's kind of like what the Old Testament is. It's the shadow of Jesus, like the light of Jesus, the light of truth and everything shining on Jesus and you see it. So he said, I am what the Old Testament is about. And he came to fulfill it, which we'll get into later. So that's really good stuff. And then he goes on and says, see the, the, the commandments and the law and the, the writings and all that are very valuable today. I love the Old Testament. I love the New Testament. Oh, I love the Old Testament. I read it all the time. You know, I just, um, I, I get a lot out of the commandments still there. I still glean stuff from it. Uh, it reminds me of uh, Paul in Acts chapter 23, which we'll get to later, later on. Um, he even quoted a verse uh, about uh, out of the law, out of the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, it's quoted a lot. It's 280 something times the Old Testament is quoted in the New Testament. And Jesus quoted it 78 times. So the, he really knows the law and he, and he talked about it. He used it all the time. It's God's word. It's rich. It's fantastic. Um, and uh, But I was going to say, Paul actually quoted that uh, 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 right there. And he quoted over different verses um, to help him to live right. Okay, so I'm just saying that I do the same. I read the, the law of the Old Testament and all that, and so it's fantastic. So it's all really fulfilled in there. Uh, really great passage here. 
Um, and he said, also, anyone who like teaches people that the Old Testament is no good or you're not supposed to do it, or even some of the least commandments, there are great command, greater commandments than others. It's, I'll go through that as we go through the New Testament. Um, I mean, the commandments, there's some weightier things that are very strong, and others are, you know, the little not as important commandments, but we are supposed to try and obey God and everything that he leads us to do. And if you are in Christ, if you come to Jesus Christ, this is very important here. So let's say this is a little boy or girl, or whatever. I'll, I'll do a girl right now since uh, there we go. Or I'll do another little boy too. <laughs> so, oops, he's got long legs. All right. Here's a boy and girl. When you come to Jesus and you come into him, he helps you fulfill all the Bible, the Old Testament and New Testament. So let's say these guys get in and buy. You're no longer sinners in Christ, without Christ. You come in here and you come. Yes, I'm going to be right by Jesus. <laughs> uh, there's the girl. And we'll put the boy over here. <laughs> and there's his long legs. Luke's giving long legs. Okay, there he is. So they're in Christ. Then actually in Christ, we fulfill God's law. The righteous requirements of God's law is fulfilled in us. If we walk after the spirit, Paul said later, this is such a rich, uh, rich passage. So I think that kind of introduces something. It's also going to be more explained in these next uh, passages here, in these next videos, because Jesus goes on and starts opening up uh, what this is really talking about. Um, a little bit. He kind of gives hints of it. Now, another thing is he happens to mention, mention a group of people here. Uh-oh, are you ready for this? I got to keep talking. I, I'm trying to keep it short. But he mentions a group that's finally first introduced in this particular sermon. He mentions a group of people, a like a sect of people called the Pharisees. Have you ever heard of them? I'm going to spell it out for you. Oh my goodness, there's so much about the Pharisees. Um... You know, so these, this is quite a group here. Now, um, there's some really wonderful Pharisees uh, that actually, I believe, entered into heaven because they accepted Christ. But many of them, maybe most of them, they, they were a real problem in Jesus' day. And we're not going to go into it right now. I'll just introduce this group of people. But once I'll share and share and share, share little by little by little by little as we go. And there's a lot of information here about them that we're going to talk about. He says, unless your righteousness, the way you, you know, behave. He says, unless it goes past the Pharisees, these people were very respected, very popular group. There's about 6,000 of them in, in, in the times of Jesus in, in, in Israel. And they were respected, supposed to be holy people. They knew the word of God like crazy. They weren't really living it very well. And then they got into all sorts of other things, that trying to, you know, add to the Bible. And they had all this stuff, uh, like called oral tradition. Like they start adding stuff. But what happened is, um, he said, unless your righteousness goes past theirs, um, then you're not going to enter the kingdom. Here he is, back on the kingdom of heaven. Remember, I keep bringing that up here. The kingdom of heaven. You're not going to be under the rule of God. You're not going to end up going to heaven too. Ooh, that's pretty strong words because I, that was a jaw dropper. The Pharisees, everyone thought they were the great people, the holy people, the godly people and all. Some of them were, but most of them weren't. Uh, I'll tell you why later, but it's like, unless your righteousness goes past theirs, like you better live better than these guys right here. Unless that happens, you're not entering the kingdom. That was a shock in that message. And then he goes on, like I said, and he starts explaining things that they were saying or their interpretation of the Bible, the Torah, the writings, the prophets and all. Uh, they they kind of messed up on the meaning of it. And so Jesus brings the fulfillment of the meaning of the Old Testament. I think that covers it. Um, let me read this passage once and then we'll be done. And I want to make sure I covered everything I wanted to. It says, do not think that I've come to abolish or destroy the law and the prophets. I've come to fulfill them. Yes. I tell you the truth. In other words, listen up to this. And he's always going to tell the truth, but he's emphasizing it. Like, hey, check this out. Um, until heaven and earth disappear, I said that. The, the Old Testament is not going to disappear. So it's still here today, and it's wonderful. Anyone who breaks one of the least commandments and teaches others to do, by the way, if I'm teaching you to 
oh, that Bible verse doesn't matter, that Bible verse and that commandment doesn't matter. I'm going to be called least in the kingdom. I, I hopefully will get in the kingdom of God, but I'm not going to be one of the great ones. But the people who really pay attention to the Bible, pay attention to all the verses, they really learn from it, and they try and obey God's word. Woo! They're going to be called great in the kingdom of God. I'm interested in pleasing God, aren't you? And God will call you great if you're really, really being um, uh, serious and you really want to know the word of God and you want to obey it. Uh, for I tell you that unless your righteousness goes past or surpasses the Pharisees that I mentioned and the teachers of the law, which a lot of them were the Pharisees, the scribes of the law, the teachers of the law, uh, the scribes of that day, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. That's what Jesus said. There you go. I hope you got it. I um, hope you understand it. And so be blessed by it and uh, don't become like a Pharisee. We'll get into that more. And just know that Jesus uh, is the fulfillment of God's word at this point. All right, God bless you.